Okay, this is a, a test of one of your power supplies. It's E2. This is a non-isolated power supply. Um, right now it's currently putting out 11.8 volts. And so I'm about to do a load test on it. Again, this is a 12 volt power supply. It's good for 57 amps or 700 watts. Uh, so let me go ahead and get things started. It's not going to charge at 30 amps, but it should it should load this power supply to about 50 amps. Again, this is rated for 57 amps. This eye charger should load it to 50 amps. Alright, let's charge on this pack at 20 amps. Let's see uh, how many amps is pulling. Alright, it's loading the power supply at 48 amps. The voltage is holding at 11.79, 11.8. Everything feels good. Power supply is ice cold. The reason there is, there is a volt drop is the wires are heating up right here. And so it's going to cause a volt drop. There's 10 gauge on the power supply output. But uh, there's 12 gauge wire, so that's what's heating up and that's what's causing the volt drop. Holding at 47 amps. Um, this is just basically proving that the power supply is working and that it's been loaded to 48 amps. So that's pretty much about 85% of its capacity. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll go all the way up to the rate of 57 amps, but I don't have anything to load it that high. But uh, again, this is E2. This is non-isolated. The next video will show E1, which is the isolated power supply. I'll do the same test, and then I'll test both of them together uh, at 24 volts before I send it out. Okay, I basically just load tested uh, the E2 power supply. It's been charging this pack for 20 minutes and a few seconds. It's still on trickle charge. It's still finishing this pack up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one, but this one has been loaded down at 50 amps, ice cold, ice cold, uh, nothing, nothing alarming, no funny smells or anything, so that one's working fine. I'm working on uh, E1, which is the second power supply for you. So you have E1 and E2, E2. It's non-isolated, E1 is ground isolated. I'll prove that in just a second. Okay, basically this is the E1 power supply. This is the one that's ground isolated. My meter is currently set up to show continuity. If I uh, touch the test lead to itself, it should show that there's connection. Alright, so the test lead is on the ground side, and so my meter is showing continuity. Alright, so I'm going to remove it, and right now, I'm touching the case. There's no continuity between ground and the case. Alright, so this one is ground isolated, so when 
you plug both this power supply E1 and E2 together. The chassis can be next to each other. Uh, they can touch metal to metal and you don't have to worry about any any shorts or the power supplies resetting or anything. And let me go ahead and switch everything over to voltage so I can show you how much voltage this was putting out. So that's uh, it's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and plug up my charger and, and uh, charge another pack. Just give me one moment. Okay, I have the E1 power supply hooked up, the one that's ground isolated. I'm just doing an independent test just to test, uh, test load this one power supply by itself. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, it's holding 11.84 volts, and it should be like around 11.7, 11 11.75 7, 11 7, under load. So let's go ahead and start it up. All right, I got it set up for 30 amp charges. I'm not going to charge it 30 amp. It's going to charge it about 20 amps, but this should load the power supply at about 48 amps. So go ahead and start this up. So it's charging about 20 amps. So it's loaded at 47.48 amps. It's holding at 11.79. It's going to slowly drop down just due to the wires heating up and the volt drop. But everything looks good. And this is the E1 power supply. Hooked up to my iCharger 36B. And there's the power cord. So. So I have both of your power supplies lower tested and they're testing out fine. I'm going to let this one finish up charging this one pack here. And, um, and then I'm going to test it one last time with both of them in the series. And then I will consider that these power supplies are tested and ready to go. Okay, I'm going to stop this charge cycle a little bit early as we're charging for 25 minutes. Current is dropped down. Um, right now we're still on E1 power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everything. They're both identical power supplies, so E1 is isolated, E2 isn't. That means the cases can touch. They can hump each other, they can do all that nasty, freaky stuff. So um, let me just reconfigure everything and get it set up for 24 volts. Now we have both power supplies plugged up, plugged up E1, E2. Uh, there's a little jumper right here that's uh, series in the two power supplies together. The cases are touching, so they are ground isolated. I'm not getting electrocuted or anything like that. So uh, let's show you battery voltage. We have 23.73 volts, so it's close to 24 volts, but um, these two power supplies should max out this charger and allow it to charge at 30 amps. So let's get that started in a second. I'm just changing out this battery here for an empty one. Okay, I have an empty battery plugged up, so I'm ready to charge. I'm just showing that we're still on 24 volts. 3.72 so let's go ahead and get this puppy started all right 
like we'll balance charge at 30 amps, we should be able to do 30 amps now since we have 24 volts and these power supplies are in series. The attaching jumper still in place. Alright, so let's start. Maxed out at 30 amps. Check voltage. So it seems like we're we're loading down. It's doing 30 amps from both power supplies in series. It looks like we're going to hover around probably about 23.55 to 23.6. Turn that 30 amps. Power supplies are cold. So this control completes the load testing of both of these power supplies.